guys, Dan here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create custom letters inside of Illustrator. Um, it's just a mix up of a couple of tools, um, it's really simple to do. Um, most of my Illustrator tutorials um, will be, you know, kind of beginner stuff because I'm still a beginner in Illustrator. I don't use it very often and I haven't really learned too much recently as well, so um, I'm just kind of still at that kind of basic level. But um, I got what I wanted out of it for the for the bells learning. Um, I wanted to create like a really simple text logo, and that is what I did. And I'm going to show you how I did this. So I'm just going to probably go through the kind of how I created the D, and then maybe maybe some other letters. Depends how long it takes um, to kind of explain everything correctly. But um, once you see how I did the first one, you can kind of get the idea, and then you can take that and get as creative as you want. But yeah. Um, we're going to create a new document here so we can start off this tutorial. Uh, my width and height is just 1600 by 900 pixels. Uh, you can do whatever you want here. Just don't do it incredibly small, otherwise, you won't be able to scale it up properly. Um, like I say, I think I've said this before in my other Illustrator tutorial, but uh, the reason we want to be using Illustrator for kind of logo kind of stuff like this is if we ever want to blow this up bigger, even bigger than it is, um, if you did that in Photoshop, things would start to pixelate and blur. If you do it in Illustrator, because it's a vector, it will not. Um, the quality does not get affected. So, But obviously if, you, if you're if you working with a 5x5 five five square and you scale that up, whatever you've created is just going to look retarded anyway because, well, it might not, but it's just so much easier just to work at a decent size just to start off with. So, um, I use 600 by 900 because it fits my screen pretty much perfectly at 100%. Uh, if I hit 100%, you see, there's not, there's hardly any. I think it's perfectly in line with the tools either side. So, because I've got a 1080p, 1080p screen, blah, um, so if you've got a 1080p screen, just 1600 by 900. There you go. But we'll probably zoom in anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But the first thing we want to do is we want to go to View and we want to show the grid. So once we click that, you notice you'll get this grid. You'll get these uh, larger squares with these, uh, the smaller squares inside. Now we're mainly going to be focusing on the large squares, so. but now we want uh, stuff to snap to that grid. So we go straight to view again, and then we go snap to grid. And now whatever we do now, um, it will just literally snap to points. So instead of just being able to free roam it wherever, um, literally the only places we can move is each little block here that you can see, like the smaller ones. So if you zoom in, so we can only we can't put it in between these. We can only go. Uh, across each block, but unless obviously it's a curve, it can curve through and stuff. But if it's just a square, you won't be able to get a square through one of the grid squares. Uh, but this is what we want because we want things to snap. We want things lined up properly. Um, so basically, the the whole idea for this is you kind of used the uh, shape tool and the line tool to kind of mask out what you want your shape to look like and then you basically select that whole selection and then you cut the shape out of it um, using the uh, shape builder I think it's the shape builder tool yeah this one here so that's the last step and then the only other thing you really need to do is you may need to use one of the pathfinder tools um, I have my stuff open here on the right side because I have enough screen space to do that um, if you're new to Illustrator and you first open it up it might look something like this uh, but basically, if you want Pathfinder up, uh, just go to Window and Pathfinder, or use the Command Shift Control F9. I'm not really much of a uh, shortcut guy. I'm getting better at it, but, but yeah, I have mine open by default, um, which makes everything easier. So I'm just going to create this D really, uh, this first one here, because it's it's the hardest one out of these. These are pretty easy. This is just a tilted rectangle. Uh, I might explain that a little bit there, because I kind of actually used the D to cut out of that, so that might be worth. You know, going into so what we're going to do is we're going to grab our ellipse tool because this is what we're going to need for this shape. Obviously, this is going to vary between shape to shape, uh, layer to layer, whatever you're doing. But uh, you just kind of take this as a general guideline to kind of what you got to do. So you kind of want to get a relevant shape, I guess. Or you can do it in completely with line tool if everything's going to be straight and you're going to have no curves. You could literally do it with the line tool. Um, so what we want is so we want our ellipse tool and we want to go down here to. Uh, our fill and stroke and we actually want our fill to be nothing and we want a black stroke uh, this is just going to make it easier to see where we're placing things and uh, we don't really need anything filled until the end to the last step so what we're going to do is 
you can click and enter but we're just going to click and drag we're going to hold shift and alt at the same time so we come out uh, proportional at both sides and as you can see it's snapping we want to snap to probably I believe I did it that big and then basically we just want to go out again and we want to go inside uh, this is about as, this is exactly how thick I did it. I did it two large squares and this one isn't actually there you go sorry uh, it was uh, just off where it should have been so now we, basically this is just two large grid spaces wide so I think that's exactly how I had the other one um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just use the line tool that from this we can make that shape um, so as long as you've got you know a decent you know idea in your head and you can kind of visualize it ever so slightly you should be able to uh, do this uh, I'm terrible at it and even I could you know do something like that so basically what we need now is we're going to cut this in half with the line tool hold and shift to keep it straight and obviously it's going to snap to the grid and we want everything lined up um, so what we're going to do is we're going to drag a line out here because we want the bits coming out of the side we don't want this actually to go back around we want it to kind of stick out a bit so we're just going to you can copy and paste or you can just you can probably copy and paste that top line there but uh, I'm just going to redraw the line and I'm going to do the same thing down here because it's, it's a symmetrical shape and then how far we want it to come out we probably want it to come out about I'm just looking at it now it's two squares wide so about here so you can kind of see the shape here already we pretty much have all the lines we need now to create the shape um, this is a really simple one like I said so that's basically what we need like so you kind of need to have your shape in amongst that somewhere and then how we cut the shape out of this is we hit control A to select all of our kind of it's kind of like scaffolding I guess is a bit of a good way to explain it and now we're going to go to our shape builder tool and now you'll notice um, every time we go inside an area that it can pretty much fill. Um, so imagine you're trying to fill something on Photoshop and you've got you know, all these lines everywhere. Uh, if there's a gap in between something, then it'll fill into that as well. So anywhere where this actually has all the sides um, connected, obviously we can actually go in there and create that into a shape. So if you just click once, it'll make, why just click there? Now that is a shape. Um, it's kind of joined these lines that make the shape and, and it's just made it together into one shape so now if we go in there select that look and when we reverse the fill we have a shape but what we want to do is we want to click and drag because we can add points together to delete lines so now we, we're going to actually create our shape here so we're going to drag this one into this one this into this and then we're going to follow this all the way around and I'm going to do this bottom bit as well and then now you can see we have if I keep the mouse in there you can clearly see that is the same shape as that so depending on whatever shape you're doing yeah, like if you wanted an R you'd probably do this a little bit smaller you probably only go you probably go all the way around here you probably cut it in half and you draw the bit at the bottom and then you'd have a line coming up the top here so you probably add another line here so you've got a stem and it curves round and then it goes then it has the leg that sticks out the side so uh, it all depends on kind of what style you're going for this was a really blocky style really simple uh, not much going on really um, but so this is what I wanted so so now we can either use the select tool or the direct select tool or the move tool I think this is actually uh, you just got to click on the edge of your shape um, sometimes it may select other lines that we don't want so just make sure that when you click it highlights exactly what you want to be the shape because you'll see the blue outline is pretty much the outline of your shape and then we're just going to reverse the uh, fill and stroke so it's just filled black with no stroke and now we're just going to click and drag this out over to the side and then we're going to click and drag to select everything other than our shape we just pulled out to delete it because we don't need it anymore and there we have our shape um, it's pretty simple um, it all depends on the shape and you know layer you're making so um, it can be a lot harder than that uh, I when I was first messing around with this it took me ages to you know kind of create something I actually liked and started working with but um, I'm gonna show you kind of how I did this not exactly I'm gonna show you how I actually made this uh, follow the same curve as this because this is done using the Pathfinder which I might do a separate video on eventually once I get a bit more comfortable in Illustrator um, so I'm gonna show you how I did this basically if you have a shape, so say we got this line here, 
um, in the obviously in that other one I had this slanted in and you can easily slant squares or rectangles or anything um, you can drag points uh, direct points if you go onto the white mouse which is the direct select tool or A for the shortcut if you click shift hold shift and click on one of the points you now have control on just that point so say you wanted this to be slanted you could click one of them and just drag it in and obviously because we're snapped it makes it a little easier to line it up so basically what I did is uh, go back to the move tool here as I'm just going to drag it to where I wanted it so I want it say about here but I obviously want this to follow the curve so I'm going to drag this in until this whole uh, side is covered so there as you can see like the whole shape is getting cut now because we don't want any weird edges and what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go back to this shape and we're going to hit control C control F which is basically basically we're just copy and pasting but instead of control V and we're control F in because we want the shape we just copied to be on top of everything in the layers over here well it'll be on top of what you copied it from anyway and that's what we want um, so then we're going to take this shape and we're going to hold shift and click our other shape that we want to cut into so now we have both of these selected but the one you want to cut from is actually the the one that will cut using this pathfinder anyway the minus front is obviously it tells you minus front so we actually want uh, this one to be above so we need to click and drag or you can right click and go arrange bring to front uh, because we want this to be in front because we're cutting out of this shape so it's going to cut the top from the bottom one and now if we select both of these again uh, we're going to hit minus front and what it's actually going to do now is it's going to cut the shape so when I drag this out you'll notice it's curved just like we wanted it to it's not great it's not I don't think it's perfect actually it is <laughs> so that's kind of how I did them type of thing so if you want to make shapes and uh, text that kind of hug each letter kind of like this part did where it kind of like follows the shape of this that's one way you can do it and obviously you could do it freehand using the pen tool um, it's entirely up to you but that's kind of the tutorial today I uh, hope you enjoyed it um, it's a pretty basic one um, I'm, I am still basic beginner uh, illustrator um, so hopefully I can get a little bit better. I don't use it too often. If I used it more, I'd probably be really good at it by now. But um, I only use it every now and then just to create random logos and stuff that are usually never too technical. They're just really simple stuff. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this Illustrator tutorial. I'll hopefully um, be making a few more videos, um, keeping the regular uploads again from now on. Um, I've had a little, I'd say, break. I think I uploaded for a couple of weeks because I've had a lot of college work and stuff to do and I haven't really had the time to just sit down and record videos um, because sometimes it takes time <laughs> uh, sometimes I'll sit down I'll record a tutorial about 10-15 minutes tutorial and it's done boom like that but sometimes it'll take me an hour just to do the tutorial because I'll either be <coughs> voice cracking <laughs> because I'll either be messing up uh, you know doing something wrong uh, something technical goes wrong like I'm not actually recording my mic or it's making weird noises or all kinds of things like that so um, it takes a lot of time actually and then obviously uploading and sorting all that out is time as well so but yeah um, I'm going to stop now because the longer the video goes on the more time it takes to upload and the more time it annoys me so um, hope you enjoyed this illustrated tutorial very simple very basic but uh, I will see you in the next tutorial which will probably be the first tutorial but anyways have a good day thanks for watching and peace